deciduous trees like ash, elm, oak and hazel differ from conifers like pine, spruce, larch and elder. In general, during the autumn, the deciduous trees shed their leaves and then regrow them again in the spring, whereas conifers hold on to their leaves all year round. So what's actually going on here? The conifers generally occupy areas close to the poles and the areas colonised by the deciduous trees. This means that the areas are colder and receive less sunlight. These factors change how the trees have adapted to their environments, but it's water that plays the key role. The leaves on deciduous trees are large, flat and thin. This means for the minimum amount of material they can cover the largest possible area, in turn maximising the amount of sunlight that the tree collects. However, the leaves also require carbon dioxide in order for photosynthesis to play, take place. The upper surface of the leaf is sealed and protected against the elements. However, on the lower surface of the leaves, there are small holes called stomata. Through these holes, carbon dioxide can enter and oxygen can exit. As well as oxygen leaving, so can water. Because of the large number of these holes over such a vast area, water loss is actually quite dramatic and the trees do need to take some steps to minimise the water loss. The first step the trees take is that because they only need to take in uh, carbon dioxide during the day when the sun is shining, the holes in the leaves are surrounded by a pair of guard cells. And during the day, these guard cells hold the holes open, but at night, potassium ions are transferred from the guard cells to the neighbouring cells. This causes the neighbouring cells to swell up with water, and the pressure then causes the guard cells, which no longer have as much water in them, holding them rigidly open, to move to close the holes. And in winter, even these steps are not enough. With generally less rainfall available, combined with less sunlight, the trees now take a somewhat drastic step of shutting down all photosynthesis. Rather than keeping the leaves on the trees all winter, but they still lose some water and also could be eaten, the tree first attempts to pull all the nutrients, minerals, etc. from the leaves into the main body of the tree. This includes things like the magnesium and the chlorophyll. As a result of this, trees go from a shade of green to brown. And so finally, when the tree has recovered as much as it can from the leaves, then extracts the water from the leaves causing them then to fall to the ground. Now this may sound like a fairly drastic strategy, but it does have several advantages. The majority of the nutrients are actually recovered by the trees, meaning that in spring the tree now can cover itself again in new leaves, also meaning that any that have been eaten or damaged are now automatically replaced, and even the material that's lost in the decaying leaves is likely to be either reabsorbed by the tree roots or by those of one of its offspring. The conifers take a slightly different approach to water conservation. They still have guard cells, however the leaves are small, round and elongated, generally in the form of needles. What this form means is that they're not very efficient at collecting sunlight, they can photosynthesise almost all year round. The general shape of the leaf means that less water is lost. This is combined with the stomata actually being sunken into pits in the needles, meaning that a lot less water is actually lost through evaporation. As a result, the needles only need to be replaced every three to four years in conifers, giving the tree more time to recover the energy used in creating the leaves in the first place. So you have conifers and deciduous trees are strategies for adapting to the amount of water in their various environments.